Hey guys, I'm going to do a video that's different than I, any video I've done yet. Most of my videos, if you've ever watched any of them before, are geared more towards homeowners trying to teach them and arm them and try to educate them when they're dealing with heating and air professionals, some of the verbiage, some of the things out there, and so on. This video has nothing to do with that. I wanted to do a video where basically I wanted to talk to somebody that wants to get into the heating and air industry. So maybe you're someone young, a young adult that, you know, a guy or girl that's looking at the industry possibly considering it as a career path for their future or you're just someone older and you've tried other stuff and now you've decided that maybe this is something you want to give a go. Ultimately I wanted to do this video trying to help them because I get people all the time that are applying for jobs and they're coming from different walks of life and just basically applying for a job. I want to do a video to basically talk to someone that is in that seat. If so if you found this video and you've looked at HVAC and you're considering as, as a career path, or maybe you already know that it's definitely something you want to do, or I want to basically help you if I can. And ultimately as a business owner, someone that does hiring, so I'll get people that apply for jobs with us I want to come at it from that angle so that way you can kind of see it from our side, you know, kind of see what I'm seeing when I have people applying. I think ultimately when I have people apply, I'm looking for two things and I look for lots of things, you know, but ultimately I'm looking for two things. I'm looking for somebody that wants to do heating and air for the rest of their life. And you might say, well, I don't know if I want to do it for the rest of my life. That's fine, but you can at least give it enough of a commitment that if it does end up becoming something you do for the rest of your life, that you can at least look at it from that point of view right now. So in other words, pretend like it's something you wanna do for the rest of your life, right? Uh, so that would be the first thing. I look for folks that this is something that they're either wanting to do for the rest of their life or at least considering to do for the rest of their life. If I have somebody come to me and they say, hey, you know, I'm a really good worker. I wanna apply for a job, but I'm starting my own business over here. I'm starting, you know, I'm gonna become a musician or I'm gonna go in the military or I'm going, going to whatever. I had a guy tell me he was starting his own lawn care business, but he wanted me to give him a job. That's a red flag. You know, if I'm going to invest in someone, if I'm going to put the, the resources into them and try to make them become a better technician for our company, better person, better whatever, if I'm gonna put my blood, sweat and tears into my business and and now this new employee, what kind of attitude do I want them to have? Well, I want, I would rather have the guy that wants to do this or is at least considering doing this for the rest of their life, okay? And the second thing I look for in addition to wanting to do this for the rest of their life is I want them to do this for the rest of their life with me, okay? So I look for people that I think that I would connect well with. I look for people that you know, they might want to do heating and air for the rest of their life, but you know, they don't necessarily have the right attitude. For example, there's people that do what I do, but they don't want to be in front of customers like we are. They're the kind of person that just wants to be on a job site, wants to be left alone, wants to put their earbuds in and do their work, put their, put duct work in or something like that. And I think that's fine. There are people that are like that and they do well with this industry, but I can't hire them because of what we offer, right? So at my my company, we try to be the Chick-fil-A of our industry, or we try to be the Ritz-Carlton of our industry, right? We're trying to provide the customer with a good experience. We're trying to give good customer service. And oh, by the way, we're going to fix your air conditioner too, right? So that's the first two things that I look for. And how do we get there, right? So if you're somebody that's looking at this, you're trying to apply to some jobs, you're trying to get your foot in the door somewhere, how do you get there? The first thing I would say is if you are applying to jobs, you got to figure out a way to stand out, right? So I get applications all the time. And for the most part, to be completely honest with you, they all look the same. Uh, and I know that's really harsh, but I'm just telling you, you can tell that somebody's just gone on Google how to do a resume and they've plugged in their information. They did a copy paste kind of thing and they sent it, right? 
And I, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I would probably even say that there are people that don't feel like I do on this, right? So they would say, oh, I don't want someone that's going to stand out. You know, I want somebody that's gonna do it right and send me a proper resume, right? But I would say just from my standpoint, if I had 10 resumes and nine of them all look the same, they all, none of them have any experience, they've all worked at this place or that place and none of them really have anything to do with heating and air, but they wanna get into it. They say, I wanna get my foot, you know, I wanna get started with you. And then I got this, this resume that's number 10, right? And number 10, the first thing when I pull it out, you know, it's got big bold letters on it saying, hey, look, I don't have any experience, but I just watched a hundred YouTube videos all about heating and air. And I just read two books all about heating and air. I'm signed up for classes at my local community college. You know, whatever, whatever you are willing to put in and make yourself stand out, you know, it's more than just putting glitter on your resume actually tell that person that's pulled your resume out okay well they worked at they worked at target for two years and they worked at mcdonald's for six months and they worked at you know whatever and but now they're saying they want to get in heating and air that's one thing but you can also look at it like hey look yeah that's my experience but by gosh i'm i'm showing you that i'm willing to put in the work i, I want to learn i want to do this and be very successful at it right another thing i want to throw out there is we used to call them gatekeepers right so a lot of times you're dealing with somebody that's not necessarily the decision maker you're dealing with say a receptionist or someone in the office that's not necessarily the owner of the company and so on. And we used to almost kind of consider it a bad thing to have to deal with the gatekeepers, the gatekeepers, if you will. As I've gotten older, I've realized that it's actually not necessarily a bad thing that there's a gatekeeper. And if there is one, you can be mad about it or you can make the best of it. And here's how I think I would do that. So if I was someone trying to get in the industry and there was a gatekeeper at a company, you know, they're, they're kind of standing in my way. You know, if I'm there to try to get a job and they're not necessarily the person that's going to be interviewing me, but they're accepting my application at that point. I think there's several things you could do to stand out with that person and maybe even get them to put in a good word for you. First of all, you could dress nice. So if you go to the business and you know, you, again, they've got 10 other people that are doing the same exact thing. What can you do to stand out? Well, first of all, you could probably dress nice, put your best foot forward, maybe give them a, you know, bring them a treat, bring them a box of donuts. Say, Hey, my name's Josh. I'm here to apply for a job. And, you know, I just wanted to say that, you know, I, I know you're going to be accepting my application. I wanted to buy you breakfast and, you know, give them, you know, give them a chocolate bar, give them a box of cookies, whatever, you know, just something to stand out and say, man, I really appreciate y'all considering me. I know I don't have a lot of experience, but I just wanted to say that I'm really willing to put everything I can into this. And don't just say that if, unless you mean it, you know, if you're really willing to put in the work, Go watch some videos, not from me, don't watch my videos. I, you know, there's people way smarter than me that's done YouTube videos. Go watch some videos from these guys, Steve Lavamore, uh, Gray Furnace Man, some of these guys that have, you know, just been doing this, they've done it their entire adult lives and they've forgotten more than guys like me will ever learn. And just, you know, go watch some videos, go learn how to do this. Uh, go watch some of Dave Jones videos where he goes through how he sizes his ductwork and how to wire a thermostat and things like that. And that's what you can say. You can go in there and say, look, I've never done this before, but I've watched tons of videos. I know how to wire a thermostat now. Uh, I'm willing to put in the work. I'm willing to give this thing a shot. Feel free to follow up. Send the owner an email. You know, again, stick out. They, they're getting all these applications and all of a sudden they get your email that says, hey, you know, I met with so-and-so, I dropped off some donuts and I just wanted to follow up. I, I just want to say, you know, I appreciate the offer. And if you, as the owner, you know, if you're talking to the owner, if you have anything I can do to be better, to be a better candidate, uh, maybe some tools I can go ahead and start investing in 
or if there's some YouTube videos. I keep focusing on YouTube videos because I think it's such a powerful platform. It's something that we didn't have when I first started in this trade that I think is just awesome. I always tell my guys, hey, go watch this YouTube video. It's really good. Just ways to stand out. Again, putting some on that resume. I have a friend of mine that's in a different industry and we were talking about it. And he was saying that he gets resumes all the time that are like what I'm describing. You know, they'll put all kinds of bold letters and all these different things on there. I don't, you know, when I get resumes and people applying, uh, a lot of times they're just, it's just, again, it looks like they went on Google and just applied. Another thing, I'm just going to just tell you a secret and you probably knew this, but in case you don't, a lot of times when people are considering hiring you, they're going to go and find out what they can about you. And they may or may not have you do a proper background check, but they're at least going to look you up on social media, look up your Facebook, look up your Instagram, things like that. You should clean that stuff up. I mean, if you got pictures of you on your Facebook doing things that you don't think necessarily would make you look good to an employer, and you might say, well, they shouldn't consider that. Maybe they shouldn't, but I'm just telling you right out, if you're watching this video, they're gonna consider it, right? Again, if they've got 10 applicants and you're the one guy that has on your Facebook you partying or you with a confederate flag or you with some other stupid political statement or whatever, you're probably not going to be hired. I'm just telling you, you know, I'm just being upfront with you. Another thing is if you know somebody already in the industry, and I'm not even necessarily saying you got to find somebody that's an old timer with decades of experience, just somebody that's already in the trade that's willing to help you in some way, shape or form. So for example, if you had a cousin that was already in heating and air, you don't necessarily have to ask them for a job, but just say, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about getting in the industry. Is there some stuff I could be doing, some stuff I could be checking out? You'd be surprised the wisdom that even a newer person that just got into the industry themselves could already help you with. You know, they could say, hey, look, you know, uh, you know, I just got in, you know, I've only been doing it for a year, but man, this is what I'm seeing. You know, I'm already seeing that, you know, these companies are doing this, this, and this, or man, you should check out this article, or you should read this book, or you should watch these YouTube videos. If you have that resource, check with somebody that's already in the industry. Kind of consider them like a mentor. One thing I always say, I always talk to my guys about is, you know, when I first got in this industry, I used to call it becoming a leech. You know, you know the leeches, they'll leech on to somebody and just kind of suck the blood out of them. And that's how I used to do it. Uh, I, I remember being around people that I didn't necessarily agree with their walks of life. You know, they weren't exactly somebody that I wanted to mentor me through life but they were in the industry in one way, shape or form. And I knew that they knew more than I did about something. And I would just ask them questions. I would leech onto them, if you will, and just ask them tons of questions, even questions that I thought I knew the answers to, just to see what their thoughts were, just to see if I could learn something, see how they look at it or how they approach the situation or whatever. Ultimately, I think if you're gonna get into the industry and you really do wanna become successful, doing all these things to necessarily get your foot in the door, even if it's a matter of just telling the owner, look, I'll wash your car if it means that I can learn from you tonight. You know, when you get off of work, I'll wash your car or whatever. And maybe if you could teach me some stuff, whatever you got to do to get your foot in the door, I think it's actually becoming easier to get your foot in the door because finding good people is becoming harder and harder. But with that said, once you are there, once you get your foot in the door somewhere, becoming a leech, becoming a sponge, if you will, learning all you can. And I think learning as much as you can about, you know, how to fix an air conditioner and how things work and all that are extremely important but also learning how to sell things, right? How to connect with customers, how to talk to them about the pros and cons of a certain product or a heating and air system. All those things are important. And I would even argue that they're probably just as important as being the best at repairing an air conditioner or installing it properly or whatever. You know, customers wanna know that they can trust you and that is probably something that is lacking big time when we're talking about service industry, that a lot of homeowners, especially if they're homeowners that expect a certain amount of quality, a certain amount of service and things like that, 
that is one thing that's missing a lot in our industry. So anyway, I hope this helps. If you come across this video, you're looking at getting in the industry, feel free to reach out to me. You know, if you want to shoot me a video, hey, I'm thinking about getting in the industry. You know, I know you mentioned some YouTube videos, you know, whatever, you know, feel free to reach out. I'll certainly pass on whatever I can. And, you know, maybe I can help you in one way, shape or form. But ultimately, I think the moral of the story is if you come across this, it's really got to be about you. I think so many people, I, I've hired people that are like this. So many people are expected for everything to be handed to them. They expect if they are hired somewhere that they expect to be paid a certain amount just because they were hired or whatever. Instead, just realize just go seize the moment, you know, realize that if you are somewhere like that, you're not at a fast food joint, you're not in a restaurant or you're not delivering pizzas or whatever. You're in a skilled industry that you can be paid what you're worth. If you go to a company or you start your own business, in a lot of cases, if you're good enough at what you do, you can almost name your price. You can almost make what you want to make, especially when you're talking about, you know, jobs where there's commissions and things like that. You can do really well. Even working for someone else, you can still do really well for yourself. So anyway, I hope that helps. The last thing I'll say before I let you go is just say this. If you are looking at the heating and air industry versus something else, I can tell you as someone that went to school to be an electrician originally, and then I did plumbing for a number of years before I fell in love with the heating and air industry, I've been around a lot of trades. I've been around a lot of different types of work. Is what we do glamorous all the time? No, but it's one of those businesses. I, I felt like when I was starting out that I could have went to college and I probably could have done a lot of different things. And I didn't do that for a number of reasons. I'm not going to get into that on a heating and air video. But now that I had made my bed, I didn't go to college and it's time to find out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. This was something that once I found it, I said, you can be smart. You can apply your smarts and you can work really hard at it and do really well. So if you're that guy, you know, if you're like, feel like I want to, you know, do something that I can apply, I can be smarter than the average bear. The average bear can't do what I'm doing. I would argue that heating and air is probably in that realm of, of talk. You know, there's other stuff too. Don't get me wrong. You know, there's all kinds of stuff out there that, you know, if you are the smartest guy in the room, and the hardest working guy in the room, you can do really well for yourself. But I would say heating and air is one of those things as well. So anyway, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. Talk to you soon.